Now what you're looking at right here is the screen that you can use on Macintosh to go ahead and pick what partition you go ahead and boot into. The first one here is a Macintosh hard drive. And then right beside that, we have SHI Linux. But what we actually get here is something you might be a little familiar with. This is KDE Plasma. Specifically, this is an Arch-based Linux distribution that now runs completely fine, natively installed on bare metal on these M1 MacBooks. And they work on almost all of the M1 systems and the performance is absolutely outstanding. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But first, we're gonna to have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Now, Linode is a fantastic option if you're looking for a VPS provider to go ahead and spin up various Linux distributions on the cloud to host your services, websites, whatever it needs to be. Personally, I'm using Linode to host my main website, techhut.tv, and I actually used their one-click installer to set up Ghost, which was incredibly easy. They have a whole bunch of one-click web installers, so you can set up game servers, Nextcloud instances, media servers, code servers, whatever it may be, you could go ahead and set it up on Linode. They have a whole bunch of different features. They have block storage, dedicated GPUs, uh, shared and dedicated CPUs, Lots of cool things, and if you go ahead and use the link down below, you can get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. First, before we go ahead and dive onto this Macintosh, this is the homepage for Ashai Linux. The first alpha release is here. Now, this distribution has been under development for some time. And it's actually proven to be a little bit difficult to reverse engineer a lot of the drivers and everything to get this working in any capacity at all, let alone this. The development team has done a fantastic job getting it up to this point. Just a quick shout out to them. If you go under the about page, you could see the actual people who are involved. And I'll tell you what, this is a beautiful resume and some wonderful people working on this project. So that's just something I wanted to note real quick. So right here is the uh, release page we were just looking at. To install this, all you do is run this command and follow the prompts, but we're gonna dive into that a little bit more in just a bit. System requirements, you can see this requires the M1, M1 Pro, or M1 Max machine. The studio is excluded, probably because they haven't been able to play around with it. And you will need to make sure you're using an updated version of Mac OS. This is an issue I initially ran into, so just keep that noted. And we're gonna need at least 15 gigabytes of free room for this Ashai Linux desktop. But a question you might ultimately be asking yourself is why would anybody want to put Linux on a Macintosh or a M1 MacBook like this? And this is kind of two-sided. One, I could sit here and talk for a long time why Linux is awesome. It's lightweight, you can make it exactly what you want, something that's not really true with the Mac OS system. And if they do get everything working on this, eventually it's go it's gonna be amazing because even at its current state, I've been playing around with it for a little bit, it's incredibly snappy. Applications launch crazy fast. It's, it's just a super cool thing. Combined with the fact Apple Silicon, their M1 processors are absolutely crazy in some of the, uh, the capacity and capabilities that they can offer you with the power draw that they do. I've had this thing uh, unplugged for like, a while and it's still full battery. And doing things like rendering video, really intensive tasks perform surprisingly quick on these machines. So being able to put a really good operating system on an incredible machine is something I'm really looking forward to. So with that, this is alpha software. So there are going to be quite a few things that do not work. And if you go down here, we can actually see some of those things right here under what works. It actually has a pretty good list. The uh, screen works, USB, Wi-Fi. The device is usable in the most basic sense. What doesn't work, we have external displays, GPU acceleration and video codec acceleration. These are the big ones that are holding it back right now from a lot of people being able to use it. So if you do plan on trying to use this as a daily driver, I would hold off until they at least get to beta and they get some more uh, GPU functionality out of these. And we have some known bugs and things like that. I'm gonna link to this down below. But with that, let's actually jump on into the installation process. So the cool thing about the installation with this, it's all actually just an SH script that will do a lot of the work for you. So you're not gonna need a USB or anything like that, but it is really critical that you pay attention to what you're doing going through these prompts. So go ahead and fire up your terminal on Macintosh. And you're gonna to wanna to type in curl https dot dot forward slash forward slash alex dot sh and pipe that to sh and of course you could always just copy and paste that from the link down below 
So from there, it's gonna go ahead and begin the downloading process. And that's going to extract and initiate the installer. From here, you're gonna to want to type in your regular administrator password to go ahead and actually launch this installer. And then from here, it's gonna ask if you'd like to go ahead and enable expert mode. Uh, just to keep things simple, I recommend saying no to this. And then go ahead and hit enter. And now what it's gonna to want to do is partition your disk so you actually have some space to install this distribution. So for this, you're gonna to want to select the option R to resize an existing partition and make space for this new operating system. And now what it's gonna be asking you is how big do you want your macOS partition to be? So one thing I recommend, go ahead and open up your system information so you can actually see how much of your disk you're using. I have the base model, so this is only a 256 gig SSD, so I need to be kind of careful not to uh, screw it up. So based on my current use, I think 180 gigs is gonna be a good size for the macOS partition, and then that will leave the rest of the hard drive over to Linux. So I went ahead and typed that in. You can see some of the other options as well. And then it's gonna give you a little warning saying during this process, your system may periodically freeze. It's better not to touch it while it's doing this, just let it do its thing and leave it alone. And generally this process takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on your SSD and the options you selected. And then when it's all done, it's gonna say the resize has completed. Go ahead and press enter to continue. And then when you do hit enter, it's gonna give you some more information on your actual partitioning. And it's gonna ask you what you'd like to do from there. You're probably gonna to want to select F to install the OS onto your free space. So press F and hit enter. And next, this is gonna ask you what OS you'd like to install. You will have three choices. You'll have the full Asai Linux experience with KDE Plasma and all that fun stuff. I do recommend you go with that. Alternatively, you could go with a minimal Arch install if you'd like to, or a UEFI only install. So to actually be able to use this, we're gonna go with the first option. So next, go ahead and put in a name for your operating system. I just went with the default, and then it's gonna go ahead and begin the full installation process onto that partition. And now to finish the installation, go ahead and type in your admin credentials once again, and the installation was successful. So once you hit enter, it's gonna provide you some details that you need to follow to make sure that this works properly. Now, when you do hit enter from here, it's gonna go ahead and power off your computer. So if you're doing anything else, make sure it's closed out, saved, whatever, and make sure you give it about 15 seconds to let it completely shut down because then what you're gonna to want to do is hold down your power button until it completely boots into your startup options. And then from there, you're gonna have the Linux option as well as your Mac OS hard drive to go ahead and begin the installation process for Linux just to select the Linux distribution from these startup options. Now from there, you may need to enter your administrator password for the Macintosh system, so go ahead and do that. And then from there, it's gonna go ahead and boot into the very next step of this installation. So again, in a terminal prompt, you're gonna to want to enter in your password one more time. And then it's gonna go ahead and ask you if you'd like to go ahead and set up a custom boot object, hit Y. And again, type in your password one more time, wrap up and finish that installation. Press enter to reboot your system. This looks very familiar. This is Calamaris. So then you're just gonna to want to go ahead and run through this like you normally would with any other Linux install. For me, I'm gonna go American English, pick that English US keyboard, and then go ahead and fill this out. Type your name, username. For what I'm naming this computer, I'm gonna go with MacBook Air. Give yourself a strong, complicated, and secure password. And then that's gonna go ahead and set up your account on that Linux system. And then here we are in our first boot of Linux. Now that you have this installed on the system, I will know if you want to go ahead and boot back into Mac OS, you're gonna to have to hold, well, power it all the way off first, hold down the power button, and then select Mac OS from those startup options. Now actually using this system is really nice, even with it missing some key functionality, such as those external displays and primarily the GPU acceleration, it still performs remarkably. And it's just really a pleasure to be able to go into KDE Plasma settings on this laptop and start configuring things. You can see I switched it over to dark mode, but again, it has some acceleration issues. So I had to kind of move the window around a little bit for the background to completely render properly. The default scaling option on this device was set to 150, which is perfect. Fractional scaling is the default something I kinda like to see. And then from there, I went ahead, opened up the terminal, zoomed in a bit, you could see Brandon at MacBook Air, pretty cool. Open up HTOP here, and we can see how our system is running from the start. 
and it's only using about 800 megabytes of RAM and almost no CPU usage because it's not really doing too much. So it is a fairly light Linux distribution. This will probably change as functionality is added. It'll probably get a little bit heavier. So from there, the next thing I tested was connecting to Wi-Fi. This worked completely fine connected to my Wi-Fi with no issues at least, and then I went ahead and loaded up my website, techcut.tv, and overall rendering everything was super quick, snappy. There was some very minor stuttering and whatnot, but for what it is at the moment, it's running really good. Now, if I go ahead and open up one of these articles, we kind of get the first issue with the media codex. It's going to just kind of spin and try to load this video. You're going to be able to scrub through videos, but it's not going to actually play because of that issue. Now, I know this is alpha level software. The fact it's even running on here is pretty cool, but let's go ahead and benchmark this anyway. Um, I just did a basic Geekbench CPU test and the scores were a little slower on the Linux side. So here we are with these uh, Geekbench results. And you can see I have the MacBook Air here and Linux M1 on the Air. The scores are kind of a big difference, more than 10% difference when it, you're comparing the uh, performance of the native macOS install with Linux. With macOS giving us 7786 and Linux giving us 6772, and the difference percentage is about the same looking at single core performance. And I'll go ahead and link to these down below if you want to go ahead and check out all these specific numbers. But generally looking at this, it seems to be about the same across the board when it comes to uh, the differences between the two systems. So overall, these benchmarks don't really matter yet until we get the actual release where we can see the full capabilities of the system. And even on virtualization, having Linux on Mac in a virtual machine actually benchmarks a little bit better than this on bare metal at the moment. If you are interested in that, I have a whole separate video where I installed Ubuntu on a virtual machine on this Mac. Performs very well by the way. So I do recommend you check out that video. So after all that, I kind of continued playing around with the system, seeing what it can and can't do. So the first things first, I went ahead and logged into my NAS through Dolphin. That worked completely fine. The transfer speeds were a little slow, but I went ahead and played a video. Sound didn't work, but the video actually played on the system, which was pretty cool. Uh, I went, I tried to do something that I was hoping would work, but didn't because I wanted to test render speeds and that is Caden Live. Uh, if you try to one, move the window around, it really doesn't like you doing that at all. It just doesn't really work. And two, if you actually get the video to go in there, it will just crash ultimately. So that doesn't work. From there, I went ahead and installed the LibreOffice just so I can kind of test basic applications. Those all are incredibly snappy, really nice. And then from there, I decided to start testing out some of the function keys, F3 to kind of bring in all your open windows that works. So that's really nice. F4 to go ahead and open up KRunner works awesome to go ahead and search things on your Linux system. The microphone button doesn't do anything. I went ahead and hit F6, which is like the little sleep button and that disabled my display and I couldn't get it to turn back on. So I had to reboot the system. And for the other buttons, the volume buttons work. The brightness button is simply having the display on or off, you can't really control brightness as of yet. And to go off and finish my uh, kind of experimentation here, I went into the uh, uh, KDE Plasma settings under appearance and tried to install a macOS Big Sur theme. And there was some sort of error when it tried to install, but some of the components worked. So I went ahead and enabled window decorations and colors to kind of get a really uh, <laughs> generic knockoff looking version of Mac OS. Last but not least, of course, the most important thing, we opened up NeoFetch and you can see this is Arch Linux ARM running on the Apple MacBook with the 5.17 kernel, default shell being ZSH, the same shell as Mac OS. So ultimately I'm really excited to see the, uh, the continuation and the development of this project. Once this is full functionality, I will probably use Linux as my main operating system on these Mac computers. And it's here I'll note, make sure you subscribe because when this is ready for actual production use, I'm gonna make an official guide which will go more into detail the steps we went through as well as some additional tips and tricks. So when that is ready, that will be out. And of course, anything else that I mentioned in this video will be linked down below. So you can go ahead and read the homepage. You can look at those Geekbench scores, uh, whatever it is that you are interested in. Uh, so with all that, again, big thank you to our sponsor, Linode. You guys are fantastic. And big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.